Hey, Joe here. Let's talk about the Vintage EQ on the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 mixer in the Fat Channel section. Remember, everything that's on this Fat Channel section on the mixer is also in the Fat Channel plugin inside Studio One. So if you don't have this mixer, or maybe you don't use the EQs that much when recording on the mixer, but you'd like to have access to them inside your DAW when you're mixing, but you don't want to mix through the mixer, that's legit. This is still available to you as a plug-in. So everything I'm saying here, keep in mind, that's what I'm talking about. So let's take a look. Here's the passive EQ we talked about in the last video. If we go over here and switch to vintage, now we have this beauty. Very Neve-looking sort of EQ. What I like about this EQ is that it is... It gives you constraints, but it's still fairly flexible. I can't dial in any frequency that I want, but I can choose a few different frequencies to work with. As I mentioned in the couple videos back, I like to use this EQ as like a tonal shaping thing. I don't use it so much to fix problems as I do to just inject a different or newer tone. I really like the way this EQ sounds. I used to think people that said things like that were stupid, but I really do, it really does have a certain sound to it. When you boost the lows or boost the highs or even kind of boost the mids or even cut the mids, there's a little bit of something kind of gritty that happens in the sound that's not there when you use a clean standard EQ like the standard EQ on this mixer. So I do like it for those reasons. Here are a couple of things I like about this specific one. The high boost and the low boost, or the high frequency and low frequencies are both shelves. You can't change that. The high is set to a set frequency. I don't know what it is, but it's probably somewhere around 10 to 12K. You can look that up. The low gives you some options. So if I want to boost everything below 220 hertz, I can. 110 hertz, 60 hertz. So I can just kind of really kind of massage the overall low end with this low shelf, which is super helpful. This is probably the one I use the most, this mid-range set to 360 hertz. There's something about 360 that on some tracks just needs to go away, and on other tracks, or even on an entire mix, a little bit of a boost at 360 brings in this warmth that's not muddy and very kind of pleasing. And then the upper mid, high mid setting, you have some different harsh frequencies that you can either boost if it's on like electric guitars and you want them to really cut through, or if you've got a vocal that's really nasally and harsh and you want to chill it out a little bit, that upper mid frequency setting is there for you. Again, it's limited, but it's a little bit flexible. You don't have every frequency available, but you've got probably some carefully chosen frequencies. The people who picked these frequencies are very smart, and they tend to be fairly musical frequencies, so you've got a lot of options for tone with this EQ. If you find yourself trying to do something surgical, trying to fix a very specific frequency problem, this is not the EQ for you. Maybe if you're mixing, you use the Pro EQ or some standard EQ to fix that problem and then use this EQ for the overall tone shaping. That's completely okay and something that I do quite a lot. So there you go, Vintage EQ. If you haven't messed with these EQs, this is the one I would say absolutely spend some time with this one. It's very cool, has a pretty neat sound to it, and I'm falling kind of in love with it.